You know, what I want to speak about this morning is something that is common now on the internet. Uh, the Lord just placed it in my heart that we should round off the family month with it. I title it Domestic Violence. Now, and we have our children here too. We purposely allow them like this every last Sunday so that these things will be fresh, registered in their minds. Everybody say domestic violence. Now that's the major focus for this morning. Now by the time I take the first point, those at the media will work with me. There's a video, two minutes video, I will want to show you. After I must have taken my first point, then we come back to take the second one. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles together. We start with the word of God. Genesis 38, verse 6 and verse 7. And you know how we do it here. We always rise up to read the first Bible passage. Genesis 38, verse 6 and verse 7. Genesis 38, verse 6 and verse 7. Let's all go there. And please, can we have it on screen? So that we all can read uh, in uniform. Hallelujah. Now I'm waiting for those. Yes, thank you. Let's be on our feet. Let's read these two verses together. In honor of God's word. The Bible says he exalts above his name, his word. Are we set? After the count of three, those of you at the children's church, be on your feet. One, two, and let's read. Then Judah took a wife for, uh, yes, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. Verse 7. Let's go. Uh -uh. Let's go. But ah, uh, Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And what happened? And the Lord killed him. Be seated. Now, if you take this verse 7, it shows that if you are wicked, what will happen to you? I didn't hear you. Okay, let me not direct it to you. Because some people don't like it when we direct it to them. What does God do to wicked people? He kills them. The Bible says he got a wife, but because he was a wicked person, God killed him. I'm going to be a bit slow this morning. Uh, Let's look at what domestic violence is all about. We had the death of um, Osinachi. I was also watching one day before yesterday. They, uh, she and her husband fought, and eventually she also lost her life. The lady is from a dull state. Uh, several happened this month. Several women died in the hands of their husbands. We also heard of men, because so that men will not be saying, uh, Pastor, have you come to preach against us? We also had issues where some husbands were killed by their wives. So when we talk about uh, domestic violence, what does it mean? Listen, domestic violence, now from the dictionary before I begin to explain, talks about actions which causes destruction, pain, and suffering. Anytime you put up an act that causes pain, that causes destruction or that causes suffering, that is what is called domestic violence. Now, the reason why we call it domestic is because it is happening at home. Praise the Lord. Anything you are doing to make somebody to suffer, you know, to make somebody to uh, 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 experience destruction and feel pain is violence. And listen, I want you to understand this. It is not only parents that can be involved in it. Even children, every single time you do things that causes pain to your parents, you are involved in domestic violence. Now, for instance, your parents sent you to school to become somebody great, and you didn't pay your school fee. They gave you to pay, you didn't pay. Now, instead of you to sit in class, learn to become somebody, you refuse to sit in class. You moved around with bad gangs, you know? Eventually, if your parents should hear it, I've had cases like that. There was one lady like that in our area. Do you know that it was when uh, the father and the mother decided to visit her school 
she was supposed to go do her HND. So they now visited her school. They didn't see her at home. They now said, let's go visit her. We gave her money to go and register for her HND. It was when they got there, the lecturer said, who are you looking for? They mentioned the name. Ah, they said, that is the fire of our school. That the lady stabbed, you know, with broken bottle, stabbed a lecturer at her first year and she was rusticated from school. You know, and the dad almost, he was crying. The mom was crying. All of them were crying. So you mean this girl has been rusticated from the first year? They said, yeah, what's the Latin lane school? Now, the father now said, we gave her money to come and register for her HND just last week and we discovered that her line wasn't going. We've done everything to reach her. We didn't reach her. So out of worry, we decided to come to school to check her. Only for them to discover that she didn't even get to school. The man cried. Though the young lady is dead now. Because she later fell into the hands of some Yahoo guys. They used her for ritual. And came to drop her at the, the entrance of their door in the evening. By the time the parents came out, the car zoomed off. You know? Zoomed off. And they took her in. They were trying to ask her questions. She died before morning. Now that was how she ended, ended, ended her own life. You know, she has inflicted pain on who? On her parents. So understand that when we are talking about domestic violence, it's not only one-sided thing. Now, when you as a man to a husband, a father, do not meet up to your responsibility at home, what have you just done? You are involved in domestic violence. Because if you don't play your role as a father, hear me, those children will want to fend for themselves. And that's why you see that they put their hands into so many things. The same thing as mothers. So this morning, you know what I had the leading to speak about? I want to speak about the causes of domestic violence in marriage. What are the causes? Why is it that husband and wife fight and beat themselves? Why is it that husband and wife fight and kill themselves? Let's look at the reason behind it. So that those of you that are yet to be married can learn some things. Now, those of us that are married can also learn some things. Our grandmothers here, you will help us ring it to your children. That see, if you do this and this and this, it will lead to violence. All the grandmas, are you in the house with me? You'll be ringing it in their hearing. And I pray that God will help us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's take our first point, which after we'll take a short video. Number one, the number one source, foundational source of domestic violence. This is where it starts from. It starts with the failure of parents to do their work well on their children. Now, when parents do not do their work well on their children, now, those children are the ones that will go back to become husbands tomorrow and wives tomorrow. Now, she obio ba de she shetu ye ko she luri omo. On taban produce ni nun family. Lo londa family mi sile. Am I communicating? Yes. Now, I always talk to my daughters that you are, you are going to be somebody's wife tomorrow. Now, my son, you are going to be somebody's husband tomorrow. So, listen. Parenting is the foundation. Let's go to the Bible. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Proverbs Chapter 22 and verse 6. Please reduce my monitor. It's too loud. Proverbs 22. Now look at this scripture. All eyes glow on it. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now look up. Look at this screen. The scripture did not say, and the Lord God will raise your children for you. The Bible didn't say so. The scripture did not say, and the child will fend for himself. The Bible didn't say so. Or, ah, it is never written anywhere. But look at the scriptures clearly. The scripture is showing us that it is not God's responsibility to raise our children. Whose responsibility is it to raise children? The parents. Or we can say the guidance. You know, I want to use the word guidance. Some people lose their parents at the, uh, at the early stage of their life. Mother, mother father, mom died. 
But somebody will now assume the responsibility of a parent. Now, what is the duty of that person? That person must assume the responsibility of training. You don't leave children to themselves. Now, and to train means to make somebody follow what? A pattern. Now, today we see parents that are so busy. You are looking for money all around. You know, we, we have uh, a school. And today you hear parents. Some parents will come to us. They've come to me severally. Sir, is it possible for, like, I have these parents in our school area at Elebu side. Now, two of them came to me and they said, Sir, is it possible for this, my child, to be living with you? We'll be paying. We don't have time. Tell us your bill. Let them be living with you. Do you know that at times during closing hour, we'll be looking for these parents? At times, we have to call them. Hello, Ibule, we are almost close. Now, usually we close based on their age. One is about three, the other is four. They are in a, a crutch. It's mommy Begri here. Now, and usually, crutch, uh, uh, sorry, uh, pre nursery, we close by two o'clock. They resume by eight, close by two. Now, these parents will bring those children by 6 30 in the morning. They now paid us again that, sir, extra lesson from 2 to 3. We said, no problem. They now paid us again for extra, extra lesson. 3 to 4, we collected money. They now consulted me again. What can we do? That 3 to 4, 4 is still not good enough. Can we make at least 6 p.m.? Ah, I now told them that our teachers have things to also do with their life. Now, can you see the kind of parents we have today? Who now trains that child? Now, don't forget that your payment towards any school is not for moral training. See, I hear now. Your payment into school system is for what? Academics. One, two, three, plus, minus, addition, times, and things like that. It is not the responsibility of any teacher to teach your children moral. What we call character. He is a teacher. is a But today's parents don't want to spend one minute or one hour. In fact, do you know that the school system we operate in a level, uh, the first uh, term, the second term, I, I was the driver. I will use my car to go and pick those children. Some parents will tell me as we are going, as I get to their house, sir, my daughter have not eaten, no. But there is money in her bag. Help me look for anything that she will eat. You are saying, ah. At times we get to school, they will now come and say, I just remember now that that child have not eaten, no. Please, sir. I will now instruct teachers. Ma? They forget to even cook it, not to talk about packing. Now, I will now tell the teacher, okay, go and buy her this. But in fact, there was one that one day that touched me. The child opened her food. We saw one, one slice of yam. No egg, nothing on it. And the child did like this. We said, what happened? Eat. He said, I'm not eating this food. I don't like it. I now called the mom on phone. Your daughter is saying, she doesn't like this food. He said, what did she bring? I said, yam, no egg, no anything. He said, eh? I told my house, eh? Now, look at the kind of children we are now producing. That, girl, that, that child is a girl. If that girl grows up in that condition, will she know how to cook? Answer me now. Will she know how to talk to her husband? Now, how will that child not experience Domestic violence. Now, follow me. There's another one too. When I tell the teachers, okay, take these children, these pupils, to go and wee. There's this particular boy. It was from his attitude we discovered that his parents used to have sex in his presence. When a girl child bends down to wee, this boy will go there and begin to look and be telling the girl, come and sit down on me.
come and sit down with me. That's what we are producing. I want to try to teach them morals. But some parents will tell you they don't beat their children. You know their parents like that. If you flog them in school, they are coming to fight. That's one. Do you also know that it is not the duty of the pastor of the church to teach the members morals? Any pastor that is doing that is doing what we call extra uh, overstabbers. The pastor is to teach them to know God. But do you know that it is possible for you to know God and not have character? That's why you see some people that don't know how to talk. Everything about morality that a child should know in life should be learned from where? From home. That's why parents wake up. This one that the husband will wake up at six, I'm going to work. The wife will wake up by six, I'm going to work. Both of you must learn to come to the center. What do we do about the children we are bringing to the world? Show us that scripture again. I want to show you something. Praise the Lord. Let's read it together. This time around, very slow. One, two, and let's go. Train up a child in the way he should go. Wait. The Bible didn't just say train up the child. You should know the, the destination. Not in the way he wants to go. Not in the way he feels like going. Hello? You know, some children, you say, so I hear parents say, my child doesn't like a, a woman was talking to me. He said, sir, we, we, they came to visit us. We served the boy food and we put fish. Seven-year-old boy. You know what the mother said? He said, my child, my son doesn't like eating fish. And I look at her I said, and you allow him? I said, does, does he react to it? He said, no. Is he allergic to it? He said, no. She said, no. He said, but we discovered that anytime we prepare fish, he doesn't like it. So we started giving him meat because he doesn't like fish. In the way where he should go, not in the way he likes to go. Last week we were at home on Saturday. Oh, it was last week, yeah, last week. And uh, Uriola and Oyi was they were having misunderstanding. And Uriola said to him, Don't you know that girls are supposed to respect boys? I said, Oyi, slap him. Where did you get that from? She's your elder sister. Let's look at that scripture again. What is the formula? In the way he should go. So you must know the way that that child should go. Now what does that mean by in the way he should go? The, you must know the kind of character that will make him to have what we call a balanced future. If you look at so many things that so many parents are raising today, ah, Tiosinashima is better. Some parents are raising animals. He's our only son. And because he's our only son, he must not go to the kitchen. He's our only daughter. And because he's our only daughter, if any one of you touch her, if you beat her, you are in trouble. Ah, she will now insult her brothers and you say, if you touch her because she's our only. The Bible says in the way he should go. There is no how something can become a lifestyle if you don't consistently do it. That's why I see. Anytime they invite me for naming ceremony, I always congratulate the moms by saying, congratulations for this new child, but welcome into the service of hard labor. Because it's shared me. I pray that none of your children will bring you shame in the name of Jesus. But let's understand the pattern. You know, I took time, I was meditating over the issue of uh, Osinachi's death, her husband beat her, and things like that. Now, everybody is talking about her death. But I think some people, we should take time to find out 
how was that boy raised? How was he raised that made him to keep telling his children that don't you know that you beat women? If you don't beat women, they will not come to sense. In the way he should go. So the source, foundation for domestic violence is parents that are not doing their work well. Let me tap your neighbor, tell him or her, do your work well. Listen, parents should understand that academic excellence cannot take the place of good character. Academic excellence cannot take the place of good character. No matter the name of the school and how much you are paying, it cannot take the place of good character. Now, and what are you to teach your children at home? You are to stay at home in order to teach them good character. I was listening to mommy Adijumo. Look up. If you are finished writing. Mommy Adijumo said that she and her husband agreed. When they were raising their children, Daddy, you'll be going out for ministrations. I will stay at home. Throughout the growth character formation stage of her children, she said she did not accept one ministration outside their home. She focused. That's the agreement. She focused on the children. The husband focused on the work. Today, all their children are pastors. The one that is a medical doctor is a pastor. The one that is a barista is a pastor. She said, now that my children have, they are good, they are okay, I have started going out. He said, I started going out just 10 years ago and today the whole world can hear me. Ah. Hey. I pray you hear this message and I pray you put it through. Can we have our first video? Let me show you something from our first video. Two minutes. Look at the screen. Is it ready? Men, no, no, not this one. Not this one. Men, mother, we'll this one and your pool. As a second video. If in the Bible, even if it ministry should not stand in the way of training your children, how much more your job? I don't know this pastor from anywhere. But I had this, me this message yesterday. And I saw that it was relevant to what I want to bring to you today. What is happening? Please pet that child. If in waiting. the Bible, even ministry should not stand in the way of training Those your children, the how much more your job? Let me tell you this. Work hard so that you can control time so that you can be a husband and a wife the bible way this culture where husband is it not possible while they are getting it i'm bringing it up i wrote here spend quality time with your children in order to help them build and wife good character. Busy. No, today, people then we outsource parenting to, to strangers. We get maids to train our no, children. No. That's why many children are dysfunctional. Some parents have even many of them are abused right. because you were not there. That we last like four hours before that child will finish watching that, uh, those cartoons. But most times, do you take time? Mostly, I sorry, do you take time to? Pay attention to the contents of that cartoon, those cartoons. I used to hear my son say, I will use my powers. Super, thank you, Super Ranger. I wish I have power that can leave that car. If you have read this book, he came to set the captive free, written by Rebecca Brown. You will see that there's, what we, there's a demonic power that a person can stay here and lift that chair. The devil is indirectly making our children to desire power. Now, and this desire for these powers 
That's what drives people into competition. Let me tell you this. Once you are ready, just let me know. When I had it, I had to call him for order. I sat him down. Oh, your lad, there is nothing like that. Now, there's another one. They will consult and become a dinosaur. They can become what I want to. Is this Zimba Rangers? Now, these are the, the devil is evangelizing these children from teenage. From childhood. And you know, because you are so busy, you don't have. To, <laughs> what about me? If you ever me a move flash drive, I'm going only eight hours. Oh, yeah, I'm going to generate 30. Yeah, I'm going to go, 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 power rangers. I'll be a bank call. Yeah, peace and gain. So that you can control time. So that you can be a husband. Look up. Even my mommy is singing. She already knows it. Once you are ready, let me know. Are you ready? Let's listen to this. The wife did. Start from the beginning. I'm waiting. Oh. The ministry should not stand in the way of training your children. How much more your job? Let me tell you this. Work hard so that you can control time. So that you can be a husband and a wife the Bible way. This culture where husband and wife are busy, then we outsource parenting to strangers with their needs to train our children. That's why many children are dysfunctional. Many of them are abused because you are not there. That's why many children are. That's not the Bible way. Many of them are abused because you are not there. That's not the Bible way. And listen, when you embrace the possibility in your mind, God, I must see whatever resource you want to give me, whatever job you want to give me, must give me the opportunity to be there for my children. I want to be there. I must be a present father, a present mom. They must know me. We must be close. Cartoons will not mentor my children more than me. I must raise them up in the way of the Lord. Sit them down. I must pray with them. Ask them how was school. I must be committed. I must know who their friends are. Don't sell your soul. Not every... Listen, that's why the Bible advised you. You can stay single. It's an option. Don't bring children to the world and leave them alone. As long as you have children, it is not every career opportunity you can take. Are you listening to me? It might offer more money if you will not be present. It is not God's will for you. If you have children, you must be present. That's why... Many young ladies are vulnerable. They can't understand why they are searching for affection. Because that male presence, the space that a father should have filled is there, is just there, void in their hearts. They can't understand what is happening. And when anybody, any guy just tells them, I love you, even if they know he's lying, they can't understand why they just want to trust and believe. It must change in your day. You must decide not to repeat the mistake of your parents. Some parents so naive. You can be a good Christian and be naive. You don't know about parenting. You bring house helps in the, into the house. You are not watching them. They are sleeping with your children. Some of us will bring relatives to help them. Oh, we are sending them to school, giving them a better life. You bring them from the village. And how do they pay you back? They abuse all your children. I know they are at fault, but you are also at fault. How could you allow that happen under your roof? A good husband is suspicious. You monitor everything. As they are going up, you know your children are up, you follow. Why is the light off? Why are you alone here? Why are you giggling? African parents are clueless. A child that was expressive suddenly became quiet.
These are things you learn. There's no way they won't teach you how to cook for your husband. In the Bible, it's not. It's parenting. And that's what is lacking today. Some children don't even see their parents. They, are, they, are, they were sleeping when mommy and daddy left. And they, are, they, they were still sleeping when mommy and daddy came. They've gone to school, they've returned, they've eaten, they've slept. Don't bring into the world children that you will not have time for. When I saw it, I loved it. I said, no, my people must hear this. Create time. My children used to, I purposely paid for them to hear. They used to think me and my, me and my wife, me and their mom, we are too hard. Yes, even I have a daughter in university, I still collect her phone. Try to find out her password. Go through our, our discussions. Then anything I don't like, we sit down together. And you let's talk. Because she's going to eventually become somebody's wife one day. And if she's going to give me peace, I will be the one to determine it. So, domestic violence did not start from violence. It started from parents not doing their job well. You saw that there was one on Facebook. I couldn't copy it. I would have brought it. A son came back from school with dread. And the father said, where did you see this? I don't know whether you watched it. The father started slapping him and put scissors. You know what I discovered? Today's parents don't really have, or can I say, not that they don't have, they don't want to exercise their control. Now, let me take you to the um, Ghostsmith's shop. If the Ghostsmith wants to make out a shape, it will, it will make sure that the metal is what? It's hot. It will be in the fire. It will be so hot. Then he will now begin to apply force. Force. To get the shape he wants. You have work to do. And you will be a niche shape. It's four I want to think because of my time. Number two. Second thing we should look at. What are the causes of domestic violence? Number two, when people go into marital relationship without guidance. Let's look at this one too. When people go into marital relationship without guidance. Hear me. Is it because a guidance is not available? No. But today's generation have what we call this independent spirit. Can anybody mamba me soro lori baba tunde ti mo fe fe yo? When it comes to choosing a partner, allow yourself to be guided. There are some things that the love you have for that person will not allow you to see. Allow extra eye to help you. They ask me on radio, Pastor, Pastor, you are saying it's not the pastor's fault. Somebody is asking a question here. Okay, so, Pastor, you are saying it's not the pastor's fault. Uh, what happened to Sinashi? Uh, they, they said so many things. And now, I now responded on radio. I said, see, one of the points that I, Pastor Prince, used to have problem most with members of God's Five Evangelical Mission is at the point of marriage. Sincerely, that's where I use our problem most. When you come for counsel, or at times when you, I discuss with some of them, bring their partners, and I discuss, and I say, your brother or sister, this person me I'm looking at, this one is not born again. This person I'm looking at, <laughs> if this, this relation, the way it is going, the next thing, you know what you, you just hear? You hear that they have joined another church. I now told them on radio, I now decided to do what the Bible says I should do. What is my job as a pastor? My pastor is to, my job is to join them. If you bring wood and iron together, it's none of my business. I will join you. It is your responsibility to do what? To submit for guidance. Have you talked to your dad about it? 
Have you talked to your mom about that relationship? Have you talked to your pastor about it? Some of you prefer that let's be doing it secretly. Don't let anybody know that I'm dating you. Let's be doing it secretly. Let's see what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Are you learning something at all? Are you sure? You are not talking. Are you sure? Look at this. Without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, what will happen? The better your chances. Without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow. In fact, some will even come to church, no matter what they preach, they will say, that one cannot work for them. Ah, no, no, don't mind, Pastor. Don't mind, Mama. What they are saying cannot work for you. It cannot, it, cannot, it, cannot, it, cannot, it cannot work. It is not our word. We are preaching what is working for us. It's the word of God that is working. But today's generation don't want to. When their fiancé or their whatsoever is calling, hello? If they are around their parents. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> mm. and they are walking away mm-hmm. I always anytime my children pick the car and they want to come back and sit down her cosmate called her one day it was a general discussion she wanted to, I said if you stand up I will slap you sit down answer that to your cosmate in my presence and don't do hmm, mm. you are not deaf and dumb That's the problem of this generation. You don't know that you need a lot of, you need help. See, marriage is not you going on vacation. It's beyond that. It's a journey of a lifetime. And for you to take a journey, you are embarking on a journey of a lifetime with somebody, it must be with the right person. If you embark on the journey of a lifetime with the wrong person, the distance will not be the issue. The part, your partner will be the problem. You won't get to where you are going. Allow yourself to be guided. And when they ask you questions, don't hide. Don't pretend. Don't lie. One of our daughters came to see me three weeks ago. He said, hey, Pastor, Pastor, I heard some people were saying that uh, I was told not to marry the man I married now that my marriage crashed. He said, Papa never told me. He said, Daddy, what did you tell me? I said, you were not our member. I don't, I don't have business with you. It was your, the brother that wanted to marry you, I told. That this one that you are on the way, you are not yet married. You people will have misunderstanding as boyfriend and girl, and you hold his, him on the neck like this. I told the brother, this thing will lead to crisis. Stop this relationship. The next thing he did was to bring a wedding card to me. Maybe it's for me to come and eat rice. We went there. I and my wife and the church members, we ate. That marriage didn't last one year. Allow yourself to be guided. Ask questions. I wrote here, today's children put up uh, 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 look at this. Listen to this. Today's children put up the please mind your business look and attitude when they go into relationship. They just put up that look. If it's in, it's in. Me are seeing them, the way they relate, you yourself will know that that's what they are saying. But when the crisis comes, who will survive it? This makes those that will help them to stay clear. Proverbs shows us how important good counsel is. Good counsel is the gateway to safety. Now, this second video I want to show you. I pity the woman. Because he got married to a man who never believed in her. This one is two, uh, two minutes. The man made his nest of kin his biological brother. So he died. 
The wife was going around looking for how to collect the benefits because of the children, only for her to discover after several years that the younger brother is the next of kin and he had gone ahead to collect 11 million. She won't burn on one, he burn on me. Please show us the second video. I hope this one will not take our time. Men, men, mother, and your puri, I'm begging you in the voice. I'm waiting. Men, men, mother, and your puri, I'm begging you in the name of God, please. Don't marry any woman you know you yourself you are not proud of because I don't I don't even know how to define this anymore. You have a wife, in fact, an educated wife for that matter, but you, she can't be your next of kin. Any woman that deserves to be your wife also deserves to be involved in your life. It's not for you or the woman, no. It's for the children because if anything happens to you, whether this woman like it or not, she will be the one taking care of these children. And it matters a lot who will not be handed over your property. Because I came back from court now. In fact, I'm not even supposed to come back to my office because I'm not too too strong. I'm not medically strong to even walk. But this woman insisted she wants to see me. And when I listened to her story, I felt, let me just share this video. Somebody, a woman lost her husband in 2009 and she was abandoned by her husband's family. Nobody was taking care of the children for her. She was doing everything all alone. And she was processing, running from one office to the other for her husband's benefits. Only for her to be told in 2021, October, that her husband's younger brother, who is the next of kin of her late husband, no, has been paid 11 million plus. And this man did not even deem it fit to involve these children and their mother, or to even take a penny to these children and the mother. And when the woman confronted this, uh, her late husband's husband, the only thing he could think of was the woman should come and marry him. When the woman refused, he filed a case at a lower court against that woman, saying all sorts of rubbish. See, as I am, eh, I'm even confused of where, what to even say to you people. But I'm begging you, men, I'm begging you in the name of God. Please, please, stop putting your brothers or your uncles or your friends or whatever as your next of kin. No matter how small your child is, let your child be your next of No matter, even if your, your, your wife is a mad woman, let her be your next of kin for God's sake. I've seen a lot of women being oppressed by husband's families, husband's brothers, just because the man did not do the right thing. Do, the man refused to do the right thing at the right time when he was alive. I bet leave me and tired, Jara. I don't even know what to say again. <laughs> did you learn something as well? Now, what am I saying? Allow yourself to be guided. You know why I'm bringing all these things up? I want you to understand that marriage is beyond sex. One of the reasons why so many of you don't prepare you know, it's because you think that marriage is all about making love. I love her. I want to have sex with her. And it's beyond it. If you are going to go into marriage and marry right and enjoy marriage, you need a lot of guidance. I wrote in my notes here, how many Christian books about choosing, dating, and marriage have you read? Some of us don't know anything about marriage. Now, look at this woman's case. You will know that she entered the marriage where she was not loved by the husband's family. And the husband, well, let's believe that uh, he loves her. Let's just believe a percentage. But you see that the husband's family doesn't like her. These are things you will see on the way. If you allow yourself to be guided. Now, if you submit yourself for guidance, hear me, the, you will be properly counseled. Now, when people come to me at times and we begin to talk, ask them, I ask questions. I ask questions. And I really ask questions. I always tell the young ladies what to look, for, look at in the, in the life of the man that will be a good husband. And the husbands, what to look at in the life of the woman that will be a good wife. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. You can't expect a person that goes into marriage following instruction to commit blunder. It's not possible. Marriage is a deep thing. And that's why it calls for us to respond now. The domestic violence you see today, if you go and find out, so many people 
that have crisis in their marriage today did their marriage without guidance. They asked um, Pastor Dr. Paul Enenche. He came up online. He made a video. His wife standing beside him. He said, I, I was never aware. He said, every single time the children comes to see me after service, I bless them. I ask the children, is everything well? The children will say, yes, everything is well. He said, it's just of reason that the children told me that their father used to say, if you say anything to the pastor, I will kill you. You can't handle the issue of marriage by your own wisdom alone. So, second thing is what? When people go into marriage, marital relationship, without what? Without guidance. Let's look at number three. Third reason for domestic violence. Number three. I love this one too. Insecurity. 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 That's lack of confidence in one's self. I will show you how. Now, permit me to tell you this simple truth. Don't ever marry a person that you are not secured being around. How, what do I mean? If uh, you marry a lady or a brother that you feel you don't deserve, you will always be behaving insecure. So you want to be running to see how you can please that person. And most times, you will run out of your will to please. And once that person knows that, ah, you don't feel secure around him, he wants to control your life. That's where you see where a man will pick his wife's phone and ask, who call you? Who is this person? Is this person mad? What kind of rubbish is this? He even go ahead to call the person without telling you, if you ever speak with my wife again, it's a clear sign of insecurity. Now, and when you want to now say, what do you mean? He will beat you. Am I communicating? Now, the whole Sinachi case, the woman is a star. The man is feeling insecure. He does not have confidence in himself that the woman will remain with him if she becomes great. And when you are feeling secure, the next thing is that you will want to demonstrate authority. That's where force and fear wants to come in. And the Bible says in uh, uh, the book of First John, it says, in, uh, perfect love does what? Cast out fear. There is, no, there is no fear in perfect love. So a person that you see that is trying to demonstrate authority over his or her spouse is a clear sign that that person is feeling not confident enough in himself. Or that person is nothing that, ah, one day you might leave him or her. So because of that, he wants to demonstrate. He won't allow money to be with you because he knows that money is one of the ways by which you have freedom. So whenever there's money with you, he wants to collect. He wants to introduce to you that, okay, let's use joint account now. The joint account that does not favor you. Anything you want to buy. Oh, I take my ATM now. A clear sign that it's not secure. Don't marry a person that, you will, that will not be secured being your spouse. Now, if you marry such a person, you will eventually beat that person one day. You want to harm that person because you want to be doing things to make that person to be under your control. Same security. I didn't hear you. You can do better. Let's leave that one. There's no time. Okay. Ah, and there's something. Here. How do I conquer insecurity? Number one, develop what we call self belief. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Two, don't stretch for what you cannot maintain. When it was time for me to get married, I chose a woman that I can maintain without begging or borrowing. If you choose a woman you cannot maintain, you will never be secured. You'll be looking for ways by which you can sustain her around you. If you marry a man so that you cannot maintain, you won't feel secure.
Don't forget number two. Don't stretch for what you can't maintain. Don't stretch. Don't stretch for what you cannot maintain. Did you get it? Number three. Offer your best and allow the will of God to be done. Ah, my word of heaven being here. Ah, I'm talking to the youth now. Offer your best and allow the will of God. Some men are going out of their way to look for money because you don't want your wife to leave. Let her leave. Offer your best and let the will of God be done. The same thing, some men, some women too, they are stretching. Ah, this man is always telling me that, you know, and you are, you are stretching yourself just because ah, the man is saying, ah, if you don't satisfy me, I will go out and see other women. Is it until you die? So, insecurity is the second reason. Where are you coming from? They're asking, where are you coming from? I went to the man. Are you sure it's the market you went? The man is not feeling secure. What you know belongs to you, you won't trouble yourself over. My wife travels. I also travel. Do you know why? I am not an oversized to her. She's not oversized to me. Level minimum B. Oh, you don't know that a person can marry an oversized partner. I've told you here before now that anything you are to borrow to maintain is not your level. Let's leave that. We don't have all the time. Number four. Fourth reason for domestic violence. When couples don't know and respect each other's boundary. So that you can understand that bracket limit. When couples don't know and respect each other's boundary. Let me tell you this story. Uh, I almost beat my wife the second year of our marriage. So that you can learn from it. I almost. That morning we had a little misunderstanding. And as usual, when we have misunderstanding like this, I'll carry my Bible. I'm going to the church office. She was trying to call my attention. I carried my Bible. I was going to the church office. And she said, eh, in Yoruba language, I said, King Boo, you know, King Bomo, King Boo, you know, King. Me, me, Motume, but who shall find no rich, rich meaning? Are you talking to me? That was what I was saying. And you know, when you are, you have, you are, you handle leadership position before you get married, there's a tendency you have pride. Now, it got to a point, I wanted her to address me the same, the way other women were addressing me. That they were. Lori Kunle. Then as she said that, I was now coming. You, you, I was running towards her. But in the inner part of my mind, I was praying. Ah, she mawano ya womini. But pride did not allow me to stop going. As I was running towards her, you, I will show you. She ran inside the room. As she ran, I stopped. And I thank God that, eh, I didn't do it. Why did she run? She knew my limits. She knew the point I will get to. I can't take it anymore. Why did I stop? I know my limit. If I follow her into the room, I might beat her. Am I, am I communicating? When you, are, when you are married to a person, know, it, know that person's limit. More and more, to my so to my be any no. Ten years, if you lose control, to batch the level, come to me. Ah, what you would do? Ah, my dear, can me. Some of you, you know the limits of your spouse. You still continue. You know that his face has changed. You, say, ah, you change face like red devil. You never know anything. I will show you that there's not only red devil. There's even blue devil. I will tell you more. Are you getting what I'm saying? Learn to know it. That's why you are married. Study yourselves. Oh, this, if I go beyond this, this level, this person can't take it again. Stop. Or else it will lead to something else. 
But some of you, you are treating your spouse as if your spouse is an angel. Your spouse is not an angel. He has flesh and blood. And anything that has flesh and blood, if care is not taken, can be manipulated by the devil. Now look at Jesus our Lord was coming from a crusade. The Bible says he was hungry. He was coming from far. He saw a fig tree and he was happy that, oh, there is fruit on that tree. The Bible says when he got there, he didn't find any fruits. In anger, what did he do? He cursed the tree. Because Jesus was in the flesh. Stop treating your spouse as an angel that cannot feel offended or that cannot react. Now, we've been married 20 years. Why is it that I've not, be, I've not beat my wife 20 years? Why is it that she has not locked my shirt 20 years? It's because she knows my limit. I know her limit. I always tell her, anytime we're in the room, if I want to get you angry now, I know what to do. She too knows. If you want to get me angry, she knows what to do. It's not that we don't know. But we limit ourselves. But the level can stop. But some people don't want to stop. Stop treating him or as an angel. Study yourselves and know each other's strong and weak areas. I've handled cases. You know that your husband has weakness when it comes to his sexual life. You're now saying, ah, you, I will deal with you. And I've learned, anytime we are handling marriage case, that they come like that, and we are saying, what is the problem? And the man is saying, this woman is a wicked woman. Papa, you don't know how. You don't know how. It's a wicked woman. I have learned that the reason is sex. They won't tell me, but it's a wicked what woman, what did you do? The husband, wife too say, ask him. Papa, ask him. And we asked my man, brother, what did he do? What did she do to you? Uh, you don't know. She wicked woman, wicked woman. They say you are wicked. You two you say as you are asking. Tell us what happened now. Papa, you don't understand. He's a wicked woman. Respect each other's limits. You know that you have a spouse that plans all these things. calculation, And you know that the only thing that can offend him is for you to take his resources without telling him. He puts money in your care. You spend it without telling him. You might provoke him. He could go to the, the extent of being violent. I have had a case like that with Andrew. You know what caused misunderstanding? The husband got home, met two pieces of meat in the pot, did not consider that his wife has not eaten. He took the two pieces of meat, put in the plate, and ate. When the wife came, she opened the pot, she burst into tears. When the husband came in, he slapped, she slapped him straight. The man did not respect her limit. Nobody is yet a saint. We are all in the making. Am I communicating? I want to ask, ask this question and answer it. Is it possible for me as a Christian to opt out of my marriage when it is becoming violent? Let's look at what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 14 and verse 15. I will answer this one with my word. I will answer it with the word of God. First Corinthians 7. 14 and 15. Ha! For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. Now look at verse 15. Verse 15. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister 
is not under bondage in such case. Now, look up. Look at this scripture. Show me the NIV version. But if the unbeliever lives, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstance. What does that mean? Who is an unbeliever? An unbeliever is anyone that does not follow the principles of the word of God. Even if he speaks in tongues and does not follow the principles of the word of God, who is he? Unbeliever. Even if he has a title to his name, Archbishop, and does not follow the principles of the word of God, what is he? Unbeliever. Now, this now answers the question. If my husband or wife begin to beat me, my marriage is becoming violent, pastor and God hates divorce, can I separate? This is the ground for it. Once your spouse begins to beat you, he has gone contrary to the scriptures. He's an unbeliever. You can separate on this ground. I'm not saying there's no food at home. I want pastor, can I separate? Stay there. And build your futures together. Because I purposely prepared this to answer you. We are my wife, we handled one case. Ah, when I had that woman's case, I was crying. She was crying, I was crying. My wife was crying. She was a committed member of a redeemed church. No, not redeemed. It's a church. Pentecostal church. Very devoted. Pastor loves her so much. She was a banker. She works in a bank and very devoted. She was also in the choir. They said anything they want to do in the choir, this sister will put money down. Pastor now went to preach in another church and saw a Christian brother that is a keyboardist. And the pastor said, ah, this, this brother is looking for a wife. And you know, pastor desired that the sister in church should get married well. Pastor now went to tell her, I've seen your husband. She didn't pray. And pastor said it out of his sincere heart. This sister is so good. Pastor too didn't pray. This sister sponsored the wedding from her money. She was okay, working the bank. And when the day she met the brother, she told the brother, after our wedding, about three or four months after, I will resign. I will be traveling out of Nigeria. And the brother too said, I have a vision to travel out. Hey, Magbo, they finished their wedding that month. Bank retrenched. She was part of those that was retrenched. They were downsizing economic crunch. So she was part of those that was... The brother was only faithful to her for one month. After one month, the man asked her, what about our traveling plan? He said, there is no way I can get money again. But don't worry, I'll see what we can do. This woman said, sir, my husband will be having sex with other ladies and he will record it on the phone. When I pick his phone, I'll be looking at him. He said, when I confronted my husband, I said, eh, do I have any business with you? He said, sir, and she burst into tears. This is eight years my husband has not touched me. I am flesh. I am flesh. I'm dying. I am flesh. I'm dying, pastor. And my pastors are saying, there's nothing I can do. I'm married and I'm married. Pastor, I'm flesh. I'm flesh. She burst into tears. I burst into tears. My wife burst into tears. True life story. I said, what are your parents saying? He said, my mother said, Nile wa akin lo komeji, ibe ni wadosi. So I told her that she has the right to remarry. That's one. But how did she get to that point? That's where I want you to learn from. Don't let anybody give you spouse.
God is our father, not anybody's father, not one person's father. If you are not convinced, don't let anybody use vision to put you into relationship. Now, apart from even when you hear voice speaking like thunder, ah, it is me speaking to you. That will be the second case of people who have been uh, uh, brought into relationship based on prophecy. The other woman, her own case, it was at the third child. She just woke up one morning. Put him in and look at the husband and say, who are you? Uh, the man see you the grace. I'll be like a stranger to you. The woman now said, the last time I came to your house, I came to pray for you. Ah. The man now said, we have been married for over 10 years now. These are our children. The woman left too. We will continue next month. If my spouse should I take this one? Refuse to change after the separation, can I go ahead to remarry? You notice that it's becoming violent. Now we've seen from scriptures that you can separate. Can I go ahead to remarry? The answer is yes. But this time, hear me, so that affliction will not arise a second time. I always tell people, if you experience breakage in a relationship, wait for two years. They break your heart or you break their heart. Wait for two years. After two years, you will know what you want. You will know the errors that you experienced in your former marriage. Then you can now know how to forge your head. I believe I've answered some of your questions. This, okay, there are questions here. This person is on Facebook says, how are we going to be guided, sir? Because I am fed up. Ah. This person is from Facebook. How are we going to be guided, sir? Because I'm fed up. Praise the Lord. I told you how God used me for one of our brothers in Australia. There was this particular lady he had known. And uh, when he told me about her, that she would come and see me, she came. After discussing with her, I took her pastor's number. Because see, don't marry a person that is not born again, one, and two, that does not have a pastor. I called the pastor. The pastor told me so many things. She had been a church girl. In fact, the pastor took her as her own daughter. Sapo here. So how are you going to be guided? You are, you'll be guided, one, by your level of knowledge about marriage. Read books. There are books that will show you the things to look at. Okay, you are saying, I want to raise a glorious home. A glorious home. You can't marry a stingy spouse. You can't marry a, a, a kind of spouse that is ready to fight you. If you want to have a glorious home. You can't even marry an, a, a spouse that is not industrious. These are things you discover. And you observe the person. You are dating him or her. You are, always, you are, you are, you are the person always giving to that person. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've told you here before. A person that does not know how to manage his own life, to mismanage your own will not be difficult. Two, ask questions from people that know him or her. You know how our fathers used to do it in those days? I love the way the Igbos used to My mom is an Igbo, was an Igbo woman. Of blessed memory now. In those days, they would send people to their family. Go and find out who are these people. Today you meet somebody at the, at the mall. In six months' time, you are the author. So ask questions. 
This one said, sir, does fighting mean someone is into a wrong relationship? Or what I don't, sorry, or what? I don't mean fighting by exchanging blows or beating. Then which kind of fighting are you talking about? Maybe misunderstanding. No, misunderstanding does not mean you are in a wrong relationship. It only means that you are yet to understand yourselves. Now, most times in marriage, you misunderstand in order to understand. Now, which means in every misunderstanding, you must speak a lesson. Did you get it? In every misunderstanding, you must speak a lesson. Last question here. Let's begin to pray for Thanksgiving. This one says, Sir, as you used to preach that a man or woman should look for these things before cutting, dating, or marrying. Number one, salvation. Two, compassion. Three, toler tolerance. Four, com commitment. Five, supportive. As we know that nobody, that nobody is completely perfect. My question is, if any man, stroke woman, lack any part of these things, does it mean he or she is not fit to marry or to be married? There are three that I want you to pay attention to. Whoever does not have it, don't go ahead. Number one is this. Is that person born again? If it's not born again, you are not saved. Number two, is that, does that person have character? Pay attention to character. If the person does not have good character, you are not saved. Number three, is that person industrious? What is he doing with his own life? You look at the person's life. I'm not saying the person must have bought a car or jeep. No, no, no. In his little way, how organized is his life? So salvation, character, and order are the three things you must pay attention to. Are you blessed? Have you learned something? Put your hands together for Jesus as I invite Pastor.